I, I think I want to basically talk about the very, the very beginning and see how stupid we were, uh, how different uh, way we were probably th That was probably, we thought that was the correct way. Now, <coughs> so I said, very beginning. I'm not going to talk about the history of uh, first 20 years and things like that. Only I'm going to talk about four, four pieces of work. So the first, probably, I think, many people probably agree that uh, Woody Bledsoe, AI, one of AI founder, founder of AI, uh, is the uh, person who started to do computer recognition of human face pictures. Now, it was not <coughs> image processing. It was man machine uh, facial recognition program uh, funded by uh, unnamed intelligence agency, apparently. <laughs> so the result, report of the result is very sparse, and I couldn't find any data <laughs> about it. But anyway, apparently, the way it worked is, was operator entering some 20 feature positions, like eye corners, et cetera, by a run tablet at that time. And uh, I looked through some documents and then uh, anecdotes and found that the operator took about uh, 40, uh, they, they could do this, uh, 40 faces per hour. Now, pretty, uh, uh, you know, large number. And, and then, uh, <coughs> not the, the way that uh, it was done was, again, by measuring the distance between those landmarks, mutual distances. You get one set of distances from database, another set of uh, distance for the current input, and then you compare to see which is the closest. Um, uh, and then that was the, uh, the recognition method. So naturally, no 3D idea. Naturally, no compensation of anything of this, you know, rotation or anything of that nature. It's completely pictorial. So implicitly assuming uh, front uh, face, uh, things like that. It's, it's clear. Now, so the exact performance, uh, I couldn't find any... Could you? No, nothing. However, uh, there was an anecdote, uh, and then it apparently worked continued at SRI by Peter Hart, uh, also a uh, senior person of AI, uh, before me, actually. Um, and then, according to that writing, uh, he and his group processed about 2,000 images. And it says that com says computer consistently outperformed human. Only with that. Now, from today's viewpoint, it's somewhat skeptical. Uh, but apparently, that that is what what is said. And uh, also, the anecdote says uh, Peter Hart said it really worked. <laughs> So that, that's, that's the first one. And uh, so, uh, well, th that's probably the first thing that anybody can, way that anybody can thought, yeah? And then uh, this group of people, uh, I think that Leon Harmon is the major person at, uh, in this three, uh, in this um, author, uh, list of authors. Um, Again, this is not image processing idea, but human. So idea is to use a 22 subjective facial feature description. Now this time feature is not a feature point, but some kind of a subjective description of the face, like a long ears, wide set eyes, and uh, how, how do you call this nose, uh, you know, like, huh? I forgot the word. Uh, you know, all this, that kind of stuff. Uh, they, they started some uh, 
50, uh, more than 40 uh, those descriptions and found that 22 are very good ones. And then the way it was input. So today, probably, it, you can call it attribute-based recognition, you know? In that sense, it's, in, it's interesting. They, they, they found this maybe 1975, one. And, uh, and then what today uh, attribute-based <coughs> approach claims is actually claimed exactly same thing. Very interesting uh, because, uh, oh, and then the human, uh, as I said, human juror enters feature grade one to five in questionnaire. So the, he had this kind of thing, you know, like uh, it says face shape, square, round, oval, long, and then circle number. And then, uh, you know, certain things which has uh, like mouth to nose, uh, mouth, uh, no, nose to mouth distance, short, medium, long, so this is grade, yeah, and just circle. And apparently some operator thought first this and then changed it like this, okay? And with this, I think two, they, they processed about 255 faces and uh, uh, those features and then uh, found that we only seven or features were good enough to identify one of them, each one <coughs> of them. So like uh, today we, we may call it attribute, <coughs> which basically says that you don't need, even though each one of them may not be as accurate, but <coughs> the face might be too redundant, that small set is good enough, which is the same discovery same finding, at least, uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in spirit, uh, as attribute-based method today. <coughs> and uh, also interesting is uh, maybe at that time everything was information theory, you know. So given this 22-dimensional kind of a distribution, and uh, so let's say, uh, if certain feature, one to five, has such and such distribution with, if it's equal distribution, then it's a highest information. If it's only sharp, then less information. And then also use some kind of a diff, uh, variance between people, which you may call noise. And then information theory will tell what how many bits per each uh, feature has, and then assume multidimensional uh, distribution, then information will theory says how many bits exist in this, how many bits of information uh, exist in this data set. And then he concluded, uh, amazing conclusion to me, with 14 features, four million people should be able to be recognized. That's the conclusion of this paper. Fairly bold conclusion to me, uh, uh, even though I like the point, as I said, they found the attribute idea uh, early on. Now, and then here comes an advertisement of my uh, PhD thesis, uh, which I think, and uh, it's recorded in many places. I, Anil, I, wrote, I was reading your uh, paper, and thanks, you also say the first automated face is uh, Takeo's uh, PhD thesis. Uh, would you certify that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> then then I, should, I should say, I can say it. I, I think this is probably, if not the, the very first one, fairly serious effort of doing this kind of automation, complete automation by program back in 19... Uh, 73. My PhD was, I started PhD thesis 1968, so that's what, uh, at Kyoto University, and uh, that's what I started. And so this is the thesis, 1973. And uh, at that time, oh, by the way, at that, at, at that time, there's no way to digitize image. Uh, so uh, we built our own digitizer. 
Uh, and then AD converter was so slow that you cannot digitize at <coughs> multiple pixel along scan line, but only one pixel per scan line. <laughs> so in one frame, you digitize one vertical column. And the next frame, you digitize the second column and so forth. So if you have, uh, say, 100 columns, then you need 100 times 30 uh, frames, which means uh, three, yeah? So three seconds, you have to be still. Uh, basically, more, you know, the same phenomena vertically as uh, uh, CMOS rolling shutter phenomena at that time. OK, so uh, we built uh, those things ourselves. And uh, it's five-bit di digital image faces. Now, this is me when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, do you, can you believe this? The, at that time, of course, we don't have any device to print grayscale image. So these grayscale, it appears, is actually by overprinting, typing the character. So the brightest is blank. Next bright is period. Next bright is semicolon. Next bright is uh, colon and semicolon and so forth. And when you run out the set, then go to the next, then overwrite colon and x. And when you run out two of them, then x, colon, and b, and so forth. And, and amazingly, we could even write a paper on the best combination of characters. It was actually accepted in a serious <laughs> journal. So that, that was that then. Uh, so naturally, I, I'm, I look younger, I think. Yeah? And five bits. And we had, uh, I, I wrote a program, completely automated extraction of 40 features, points, by, quote, flexible feedback scheme. And you can, you can easily see what I mean, flexible, uh, which basically means I wrote the code uh, by thinking all kinds of things. And I learned everything myself, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, how straight uh, this should be. And then looked around, and, oh, I think about 6% of the time, very straight. OK, 0.6. Uh, so uh, machine human learning of all parameters, and that's uh, and then uh, input. Uh, oh, the output is not as good, but uh, Laplacian operator extract the uh, contour, and then uh, small components like uh, top of the head, face contour, uh, chin position. Uh, and so forth, a small sec program built, and then like a nostril detector and, and all those small program. And then uh, flexible means uh, you, originally you should go this way, but at each moment you'll check w the consistency among what has been found. And if something goes, appears wrong, you go back and uh, retry it. So called flexible feedback. Uh, fancier name of uh, all heuristics. That's uh, we wrote. Um, so that's that's done. And uh, and I think if you look at this, it's reasonably good. You know, like those feature points. Uh, by the way, machine was uh, uh, ten microsecond cycle time, twenty kilobytes main memory. Uh, so that. At that time, uh, the machine that I wrote used that level of machine. And then, uh, and then by the way, this whole program was written in assembler, <laughs> assembler code, about this thick uh, of uh, printout. So it, it was a hard work. Um, and, uh, and then uh, this is one of my uh, bragging point. 800 images were successfully processed. And I often give a talk. Uh, the history of computer vision, and then we say, at that time, if you process one image, you can write a paper. <laughs> so that means automatically successful because you can change the parameter in a way that that program works for that particular picture. And if you process 10 images, we boasted with 
statement with a large scale experiment. <laughs> Seriously, if you process 10. And, uh, and, but my professor, actually, I'll tell you why, had about 1,000 images uh, collected at that time. Um, so we processed. And also, I did uh, 20 people identification experiment by using this program. Uh, so similar idea as uh, Blesso's uh, type of position-based uh, program. And it was mo one month separated at different location, 20 pe people. And uh, well, 75 sounds good, but 15 out of 20 were correctly recognized by, of course, adjusting parameters correctly. Uh, I couldn't get any more than that, which means I think that the program had probably substantial limitation. Uh, uh, so the features I used is, you know, those, all these features were detect, uh, calculated and you compute one, uh, x1 to x16 and use the multi-dimensional, 16-dimensional space uh, uh, they call discriminant function. So that's how it was done. And by the way, uh, this is very interesting. But as early as 1970, uh, this early version of this program was actually used in public. Public. And uh, this is it. It's called computer physio physiognomy. Phys uh, is that how you read? Physiognomy. Really. This is a public attraction at 1970 World Expo held in Osaka. And visitor come and sit there. And as I said, he has to be still for three seconds because the digitizer takes three seconds to digitize his face. And then digitize it and then program process it and then detect all these features and compute the distance and so forth. Compare it with uh, many, with the five or six, I forgot, famous people. Marilyn Monroe, Winston Churchill, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, I think uh, those people, I remember uh, those people. And then it says, you are uh, John F. Kennedy type. <laughs> and you, know, you are Marilyn Monroe type and so forth. And it was enormous success, enormous, <laughs> because people were so fascinated about this output, really. And uh, so can you imagine, this is 1970, so, uh, so the you know, computer was not that common in daily life, of course, and then let alone image processing. So people uh, give, were given this kind of output as a souvenir. And uh, so it was so popular. I recall, I was told that about 20, uh, I forgot how many, 20 or uh, quite a few thousand people came. And uh, so my professor thought that it's a good idea to collect the digital data at that time. Uh, but unfortunately, he collected only 1,000 out of about 120 or so. Okay. So if it, he had collected all of them, then at that time, it could be an inconceivable sized face database. Even 1,000, by the way, it's inconceivable size at that time. Okay. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's how it. Um, and uh, uh, since then, I myself, actually, uh, face was one of my favorite topics, and I did uh, detection, expression, alignment, uh, things like that. But this is not the time to talk about later, but the very beginning. Uh, so the last thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is this important work of Fischler and Elslager uh, at Lockheed uh, Palo Alto Research Center. Uh, he, they did a very important thing, which is object representation by parts interconnected by spring. Uh, this is a very often used picture uh, in, his, in their paper. So today, I think we, people call it PBM, uh, parts-based model, graphical model. Um, and that this is the origin of that paper, um, uh, the origin of that idea, this paper. And uh, so the matching is naturally uh, energy minimization of two terms. One is 
local matching of parts, and second is the dis sort of distortion energy, uh, uh, f which is represented by the spring uh, tension, torsion, tension, uh, separate f uh, from, different from the model. And so that was uh, as early as 1973, uh, people come up with this. And uh, as you know, um, and then a solution by dynamic programming, applied technique <coughs> to phase part localization. And he tested with uh, 15 phases. And uh, these are the kind of result which I annotated myself. Uh, phase image. This is four bit image, four bits. And uh, you can see 40 by 38. And uh, these are the positions that was found. And this is intentionally uh, 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 Gaussian noise added to the image. And then he tested with uh, overlaid with uh, character and that kind of a synthetic, uh, how do you call mm, non random uh, uh, noise. And, and as you know, uh, <coughs> this became standard technique in vision today uh, called part by space model. So that, that's, uh, those are the four, I think, the very beginning work. And uh, in that sense, to me, it's interesting if, uh, find, if you look at it from today's perspective. So one thing is alignment as a key problem. Uh, indeed, I, I like this statement. I, it's often attributed to me, which says, people ask, Professor Kanade, what is the most important problem in computer vision? And I said, registration, registration, and registration meaning alignment is the key. And I think, uh, indeed, that was found at that time. Face model representation. Obviously, my program didn't have explicit model, but the program, the way that program is written, implicitly represented. Uh, Fischler and Elslager uh, represented it the more neatly by that parts model. Um, now, however, I think Obviously, at the, in the, you can see the whole kind of holistic picture, total picture approach, uh, never thought at that time. I think it took even, if you, you know, think, uh, um, uh, how do you call it, the um, PC, PC, PCA um, phase, uh, uh, holistic, like maybe it's, phases. yeah. Uh, the, that it took, what, 1991, right? That's 1991. So it's interesting. It took almost 20 years to come to the whole picture idea. Uh, I think that the, the, we can easily see that because people hated correlation, pattern matching, because there was a strong belief, mostly com coming from MIT, which says never use correlation. And it's interesting today, correlation is the most basic and working method today, and it's changing, you know. And of course, uh, more uh, uh, deep learning type of neural net method is more holistic, and the uh, model is probably implicitly represented in the connection, weights of the connection, rather than explicit. And uh, of course, the, we didn't have even tool to do 3D. So that was a big mis disadvantage. Um, so even at the time of writing the code program model, uh, 3D data was not available. Therefore, the program did not use it. See, so today, many 2D image processing type program works, that works very well, I found is actually minimally, if, even if it doesn't use 3D data at all at the runtime, uses the 3D data at, at, the, at the time of modeling or at the time of learning or at the time of building the program in, in a certain way. And that is the winner, most of the program, as far as I see. And that idea was not there, let alone using 3D at the runtime, which is uh, inconceivable at that time. And today, of course, uh, it's conceivable that even runtime 3D in some applications available and uh, indeed successfully used. Um, so uh, that's what I think. And I really like to see 
what uh, today, what the new things can solve the old problem. Thank you.